Hello, I'm Dennis Danzik, and welcome to Episode 6, Part 2, Laboratory Device Betty 4. I'm uh, going to go quickly through two modifications that we made to this engine uh, from Episode 1. If you didn't watch Episode 1, please look back at it. There's very important uh, lessons in there um, that you should be aware of before you go on to uh, this video. We do not edit these videos. We have a clock here with a second hand on it, the reciprocal. Uh, camera behind me uh, shooting the back and of course it has a clock in its view as well. Um, if there's a little bit of a hiccup or a bump in the road uh, that I experience, we just continue on. Uh, we do not want to edit these videos uh, so that they're presented in the best possible light. Um, the modifications that have been done, I've taken the neutral space out of the attenuator. So the attenuator is about uh, 25 to 30 millimeters closer. And as you can see now, when it's rotated, every time it comes around to the point of entropy, uh, which you can learn out in, in previous lessons, you'll see the engine fire. And what that does is uh, continue to help its rotation. Um, again, uh, flywheels do not generate energy. They do not generate electrical energy. They store energy. And that is a function of the flywheel's speed. In other words, how fast it's rotating, its diameter, how large it is, and its weight as related to its mass. Um, in that particular order. That's how much energy we can store. And then that energy is then transferred to the alternator on top of this particular laboratory device. Uh, it could be a generator or other device you want to, uh, to, you want to use to actually generate the electrical energy. Um, besides moving the neutral space out of here, I've taken the flywheel off. And as again, this is a very simple <laughs> flywheel with a couple of uh, uh, off-the-shelf magnets, uh, probably neodymium magnets, uh, in the uh, in the end of the flywheel. Um, so there's no flywheel anymore, and we are going to drive this uh, particular uh, engine now with a little servo drive over here. It has a little quarter-inch drive. Um, uh, shaft on it that's connected to the attenuator and we're actually going to run the engine uh, with a 9-volt uh, battery. If you come for a tour here at the uh, at the laboratories in Scottsdale, you actually get to charge a dead 9-volt battery downstairs in the lighting lab uh, through photonics while you're uh, actually there watching, uh, learning about the uh, uh, the technology. Uh, charges in about 15 minutes. Um, a little over seven volts is what we need to run this engine. And then you bring it up, you're in custody of the, uh, of, of the battery. You bring it up and you actually run this engine off. It's a lot of uh, fun. People find it very, very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rev this up a little bit. I'm gonna take this out of neutral, as we learned in the previous video. There it goes past the point of entropy. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that. We're gonna get a little bit of acceleration out of it before we go into the back of the device. And we have turned the testing equipment around so that we can see the screen as far as what the consumed amperage and volt voltages are um, as we run this engine. So let's go around to the back and I'll explain that. Okay, back here we have a 24 volt capacitance system and it's transparent. As you can. These have to be Maxwell capacitors, but we use others. And then we have a meter that displays, I'm gonna reset this that displays the amount of voltage that's currently in the system. It looks like we got 5.878 volts. As this uh, engine speeds up, it will, through the alternator, start to raise. It just did 8.1. It will start to raise the millivolt side of this. And uh, you that can zoom in um, can watch this meter climb as the, uh, as, as the engine uh, progresses in speed and puts uh, energy out through the, uh, um, through the alternator. Back here we have the operating computer for the system. Again, everything that you see here um, in these videos, uh, everything that you'll see when you come to the lab, if you choose to do so on a tour, uh, actually machined all out of raw materials right here on site. We have no third party vendors. Um, we build all of our own electrical components. Some of these are off the shelf. We don't wanna be in the chip business or anything like that. So some of these boards, we buy, but we assemble them here, and all of the programming, all of the software is written in-house. We've never had a third party um, 
uh, participate in the building of any of the photonic systems, uh, and, and wh whether it's uh, lighting, uh, coils, engines, battery systems, capacitors, any of that um, uh, nature. We do buy some off-the-shelf components, but it's uh, reconfigured and assembled here. Behind me is part of the vernier system, which we have on here for uh, amps and, and potential voltage. And you can see here we have current, and it's measured from here about zero to about uh, amp and a half, and from here zero to 10 volts. We're going to run the engine today off of this 9-volt battery, which I explained before. This is a, an 850-amp-hour uh, battery, not that large. Um, this happens to be a Kratax whatever brand that is, and we're going to plug it in right here and run it. The only way that I can adjust the speed on the engine is through this optical sensor, and we have a little bl blade on here that will trip that, and we have the degree wheel here um, that uh, describes how the attenuator is being adjusted. I'm going to put a little bit of energy into that just to, to keep it going so we don't go from a standing start. And what the computer is going to allow the engine to do is adjust that attenuator so that we get proper acceleration. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in, turn it on, and the computer is going to find out where it's at. And I'm going to hit collect here. And as you can see, here's our battery voltage climbing up to about 8 volts. And you're going to see the drain of the system. We went from about 0.4 of an amp all the way up. And we can actually get real-time statistics on this screen. And I'm going to go ahead and speed it up just a little bit. That's all I have to do. And you'll see as the device speeds up, and remember, it's uh, uh, putting potential um, back into here. We started at 5.880. We're now at 5.884. You'll see the millivolt. Um, we run it at this speed so that uh, you can actually see that millivolt um, climbing. This is not normally run at this speed. Uh, the photon engines but run much faster than this. We do this for safety concerns. We have a lot of people here on tour and we have to be guarded about how fast we run things. Make sure everybody's uh, safe and sound when they're on a tour. We'll co continue to keep collecting um, data on that. I'll continue to speed it up. And if you watch the graph, and I hope that's very clear there, uh, obviously if you come on tour you'll be up uh, close and personal. I'll pull the battery and you can see the system crash. There's no energy going into the system now. I've got a flat line on both voltage and amperage. I plug the 9 volt battery back in. It's going to find out where it's at. And there we go, back up. So we're back up, uh, looks like to about 8 volts and coming down to about 5 volts when it drains down. And here's our amperage coming up uh, towards an amp and a half and down uh, as low as about 0.1 of an amp. Now I can get accurate real-time statistics from this system and again this is what we're using to run the engine. Okay and I'm going to go ahead and run it really well. I'm going to speed it up some more. We're probably right now at about uh, 25, 30 RPM. We've got this set to run at a maximum of about 40 um, so we're there. And I'm going to go ahead and get some statistics right now. And there we go. I'm going to bring this down here. You probably won't be able to see this very well, but we'll take a snapshot of it. So on our battery right here, we've got a mean of 6.465 volts. That's what uh, we are, are on our battery, the power going into the system. And I'm going to get the amperage here in real time. And I'll bring that over as well. And the amperage is 0.469 amps on average. So 0.469 times 6.45. We're about 3 to 4 watts of power um, going into the system. I'll clear these statistics. And we'll let it run for a while. I'll continue to speed the system up. Go back over here to our load. We're now at 5.901, so our storage is increasing at a very, very slow speed uh, through our alternator uh, up on top, just to show you that that alternator is just a conventional axial turbine alternator. There's the top, there's the bottom, coils are in the middle. 
and now we're at 5.903, steadily climbing at that, uh, at that speed. And again, here, we are not about violating the laws of physics. What we're about is showing that there's a tremendous amount of wasted potential energy out there in our everyday lives. And if we have a way to, to gather that energy up, which we have developed here in these laboratories in, in, uh, in uh, both Wyoming and Scottsdale, that we can take that energy that's passive um, and turn it into something that is dynamic, actually goes through an alternator and produces a, a decent amount of energy. It is a um, kind of a physical multiplier um, in a way, um, as is a transistor. It's very interesting, very unique. We're not here to um, discuss all the nuances of physics or electrical engineering or electronics. What we're here to do is commercialize this so that people can start using uh, this renewable energy source wherever there's a light on, wherever there's back EMF, which you can learn about in other, in other lessons. And as you can see here, it runs the engine very well. I'll, uh, as we're going along here, I'll pull the battery again, just so you can see it flatline. So we flatlined our voltage, we flatlined our amperage, plug it back in. And as you can see, it'll just continue to run off that little battery. I'll speed it up some more. And you'll see that even though it speeds up, we're not really using any more energy. If I go back to, we'll get the statistics again. And again, I know this is very difficult for you to see, but looks like we're using a mean of 6.466 volts. Those of you that can zoom in on that. And we are currently at an average of 0.516 amps. So we're still in about the 3.5 to 4 watt range of energy that we're using. Um, also, we don't have to run this engine all the time. We can get down below um, 3 watts, 2 watts by going into a harvest cycle. And that's just a programming adaptation, which I'll flip on now. And you'll see this will run for one minute, and then it will coast for one minute, cutting the energy consumed out of this 9-volt battery in half. And I'll show some other attributes on the other camera um, while we're waiting for that. So that's, like I say, about a minute, and you'll definitely see that on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and close these out. And our uh, engines on harvest cycle... Uh, when you come here to the laboratory for a tour, they run for about one to one and a half minutes, and then they harvest. They harvest that potential energy um, out of the flywheel over about a six to nine uh, minute period. So it, whatever you see us using, you can, in this case, divide it by two over a long period of time. I'm going to go back around to the front. And there we went into harvest mode. You can see on the screen here, that we have flatlined. You can see the battery here is coming back up to around 8 volts and staying steady. And our amperage is down here below 0.2 of an amp. So when we go back, we'll take a look at those statistics. It's going to be in harvest mode. We're now up to 5.930. Uh, so we have uh, climbed. Uh, now we're building uh, tents. Uh, of, a, uh, of a volt over a very, very short period of time. And we'll just let that flywheel slow down. Again, it's slowing down, but it's still producing energy. Okay, and we'll let the computer take over and start up again. So as you can see from this side, the attenuator is doing its job. It's being driven by this very, very, very small servo. When you're here on a tour, you get to uh, actually operate this engine uh, yourself. Um, here we go. We're coming out of harvest cycle. And if you look at the back shot, you're going to see that the graph is now active again. I'm going to walk back around to the rear. And here we go. We are back up. And as you can see, here's our potential, our voltage of our battery being used. Here's our amperage. We got a lot of data points now, so it's collapsing. Here's the amperage that we're using. Again, if I take the battery away, we go back down to zero. Plug the battery back in. And computer's going to find out where it's at, and it's going to take right back off again. And there we go. 
there's the active energy being consumed by the engine, which of course we got out of our passive system, so it really didn't cost us anything except the installation of that passive system. Uh, in a room like this, we have to have the lights on anyway. Um, again, those are in upcoming episodes, which I think you'll find very, very interesting. Back around to the front. We're now up to 5.939 volts in this very, very large capacitor set. And those of you can zoom in, now 5.940, that you can uh, zoom in on it. And, uh, and you can see the uh, growing uh, storage in this capacitor. Well, that's about it for this episode, episode six, part two. If you haven't seen the other episodes, please dial back and take a look. We're gonna let this continue to run off that nine volt battery and on its harvest cycle, which it just entered. Um, if you get a chance, come uh, to Scottsdale uh, for a tour. Um, you're also gonna be able to tour the laboratory in Wyoming um, very shortly, probably towards the end of, uh, end of the summer. Um, so we appreciate it. Any comments that you've got, please contact the company and, uh, and give us comments and critiques. Uh, again, if you come here on a tour to Scottsdale, all of these engines are in, are in the open. You get to actually operate them uh, when you're on a tour. We don't interfere in any way other than to make sure that you're doing it safely. Uh, you can bring meter with you to check the inputs and outputs. Again, under supervision, these capacitance systems and the energy systems that we have connected to photon engines um, are powerful and they can be dangerous if uh, you don't know what you're doing. So, but we encourage uh, uh, the interface with uh, the public and our, our technology. So for quantum energy, um, we'll see you in the next episode.